And now we continue our top of the class series on Need to Know. The series introduces you to high school students in our community, not only working hard in the classroom, but also trying to make our community and our world a better place. The young person joining me today has had a significant positive effect on race relations in her school. That's the criteria for students recognized for the Princeton Prize in Race Relations. Today I am joined by Iman Muthana. The World of Inquiry student is a runner up in this year's Princeton Prize in Race Relations. And welcome to the show. It is great to have you here. Thanks. So I just want to start off by saying we launched this series uh, again to not only highlight young people and the work that you're doing in school, but also the impact that you're making on the community and also to learn about what matters to you, what matters most to you. So just to start off, what are some of the social issues that are personally important for you? Well, basically all social issues matter to me, but specifically I am leaning more to, toward the freedom of religion as well as women's rights. Both and, incredibly yeah. important, but go ahead, sorry to yeah. interrupt. No, no, and they matter more to me because we're like we're in a country where freedom of religion is valuable and we need to make sure that everybody is having this as and women's rights are one of the most important things because women's rights are facing a lot of violations of rights so it's just something that me means a lot to me and I want to touch upon this, uh, speaking of, of women's rights and religious freedom. So I, as I mentioned, you're a student at World of Inquiry. You yep. were one of three winners up for the Rochester Princeton Prize this year. You've lived in the U.S. for four years, and you are one of only a few young women at your school who wear a hijab. And that is for people who don't know the beautiful headscarf that you're wearing right now. So explain just a little bit, why did you want, because you originally, you started this World Hijab Day at your school. Describe why that was an important event for you to do. Well, it was the first two months me in the school. It was like I was a new student there, so I wasn't having a lot of connections with the students. So I wanted to have the event just to create more connections between me and the student and be included in the community. So I had the idea of the event since it's a movement worldwide. So yeah. I had tried to have it, and uh, we ha had we had a couple of scarf donated to us, and we wanted the students to try to support those who choose to wear the head scarf. And it was a great time for me. It was as an introduction to the school and be and realizing my similarities with the students. And even though our di di differences make us stronger, there there is a time where we need that to realize that we are similar in a, such a humane way. Yeah, very true, very, very true. So I want to talk about this because you said some of, some of the, the headscarves were donated. Yeah. So what did you ask for World Hijab Day at your school? What did you ask the students and, and the teachers to do on this particular day? Well, first of all, I had to write a letter to the principal asking for a permission to hold the event. And then there was an email sent to teachers ask, telling them that we will be holding the events, and if they would donate us some scarf, and also the parent-teacher crew donated us some money in which we bought the carnation for the boys to participate as well. So the students just, we just, students were just asked if they would like to wear a carnation for the boys and a headscarf for the girls to support these Muslim girls. And after they wear them, like they just ask some questions, and it was just a one of the nicest time in my in the school for me because I can feel me I can feel that we are really comfortable asking us and learning about each other. That's right. And I understand. So tell me if I'm wrong. More than 300 students wore uh, or and teachers wore headscarves or the carnations and the ribbons to show their support for Muslim women around the world. Yeah, that was in the first World Hijab Day. We had more students participating in the second World Hijab Day that we had just recently in February. So how many, so you had 300 the first time, about how many the second time then? I'm not really exactly sure about the number, but they were more than last year. Wow, yeah. wow. Talk about, because um, you said that, you know, this, this really allowed you to show that um, there are strength in differences, but also that we're, we're a lot more alike um, yeah. than we are different. What were some questions that students had for you that you think were really answered uh, because of, of these events, the World Hijab Day? Well, one of the questions that was mostly repeated was, did we have the choice to wear? And I'm not, 
I, w I would say for most of them, they have the right to choose it. I'm not sure if others are really forced to wear it, but for us, we had World Hijab Day in which we support the ones who really choose to wear it, not the ones who are forced to wear it. So students were asking, are we really forced to wear the headscarf, in which I have to explain, no, it's a right. It's, it's your right. When you feel comfortable, you would wear the headscarf as a symbol of modesty and, you believe, and faith in you, within you. So do you have plans to do this again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> would you change anything or would it be exactly the same? I think it would be exactly the same. And yeah. I know that, I understand there was some reaction uh, on social media and, and in the news. Um, there, not all the feedback that you received, or this event I should say received, was positive. Um, but how do you think, uh, aside from that, how do you think that an event like this that you organize in your school, how does it create better cultural awareness, um, and not just in school, but also in our community? I think we, we actually had World Hijab Day just to edu educate the students and the community as well, and to promote awareness and understanding of the fact that Muslim girls choose to wear the headscarf and not be, and not le letting them be judged based on a piece of fabric out on their head. So, yeah, this is, was one of the, the most important things that our school had done to promote understanding. We also had participated in a lot of other events that try to engage students to learn about all the color, different, diverse backgrounds that many students in our school came from. So it's part of educating and letting other, others to understand that there's something that we are all, we're not all the same and there's something within us that makes us unique and we need to learn this about each other. I also understand that you participated, you were a representative uh, from your school in the recent um, countywide summit on race uh, for high school students. So mm -hmm. again, just another way to really, to share that message of, of cultural understanding and, and tolerance. How would you, if there's a piece of advice that you would give to someone your age, another high school student who, who might watch this, how would you say to them or encourage them to better get involved in something like this, like the, what you're doing? Just to know their surroundings, just to know that there's a lot of people who are, who, they, who are different and not the same as who we are. We need to ask others who they are before we start judging them, judging them based on what the media or other stereotypes are being spread about who, who they should be. All right, well, we are out of time, but a special thank you to our guest for the Top of the Class series, Iman Muthana. No doubt you will hear her name again and again in our community. Thank you for your work, and thank you for all that you're doing around racial tolerance and understanding.